out here in this desolate region of central Oregon, just northwest of the town of Mitchell, is the site of the state's first dinosaur discovery. Oregon, and in particular, this central area of the state, is known for its exquisite and amazing fossils. But these fossils from the nearby John Day are mostly mammal fossils and are of a much younger age. The fossils at this site here are estimated to be just over 100 million years in age and puts that dinosaur, a fossil ornithopod, right in the middle of the Cretaceous period. Greg Retallick, a paleontologist from the University of Oregon, found that first dinosaur fossil, a toe bone, back in 2015. Recently, an avid paleontologist found the second bone at that site. That discovery has led us to today, where a new excavation with a permit from the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, and help from the North American Research Group and the Oregon Museum of Natural and Cultural History is taking place. Join me for a few minutes while I walk up this hill and visit these folks on the work to find more fossils, including those from dinosaurs. So how did you get involved in this? Uh, I just saw the info on the website and saw it was close to home, so I decided to go to a fossil meeting and just kept going after that. I've been involved with a couple of the digs at the club, including the flatosaur. Uh, I'd to come over and give it a try with a dinosaur. And so what is this club that you're mentioning? North American Research Group, ah. known as NARC. It's a fossil, amateur fossil club out of the Portland area. Uh, what is NARC? NARC stands for the North American Research Group, and we're a group of amateur paleontologists, to people from different walks of life. We like fossils. So we go around in groups and do field trips and dig for fossils, fingers crossed. And what got you out here today? I found that Greg was going to be um, part of this group, Greg Carr, and uh, Wherever Greg goes, he finds fossils. So I wanted to make sure that I could do a field trip with him to look for things. We're hoping, fingers crossed, for dinosaur bones, but expecting ammonites mostly. Cool. Do you do anything else with STEM education or So things? I'm a biology instructor at Portland Community College. And so as many times as possible, I bring the fossils and paleontology record in. I've found that it's being part of the group has really helped with my my own development as a biologist. Oh, I'm a biologist to look for uh, shark teeth, which is really tiny. <laughs> Any luck so far? No luck so well, far. Kind of a I can only get so far. <laughs> and how did you get from Smith to Oregon? Um, I was actually like living in Denver for a year because the school is remote <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I applied to an internship that they, they were just having an internship and I, I just wanted to see as much as possible. And Greg, where do you teach? Uh, well, uh, I teach, I do teach at a local community college, Clackamas Community College up there yeah. in uh, by Oregon City. I don't have, I don't teach anything about paleontology or geology. I teach uh, uh, controls and instrumentation and high purity water production. And paleontology has always been just a fun hobby for me. We're going. Here we are, we're, we're, we're about 100 meters from where the Oregon toe bone was found, the Oregon mm -hmm. um, ornithopod, the Mitchell ornithopod. Uh, that was the first discovery. And because of the dip of the rock here, we think we're on the same level. Now, when, when we found that toe bone, it was just a toe bone. We couldn't identify the fossil. And also, we had a suspicion it had been created by float and bloat. In other words, it, it bloated and then drifted out to sea. So the chances of finding another one would seem absolutely impossible. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, Gloria Carr found another bit of bone right in this excavation. Right, right over there. Just right over there, and it's a centrum. Uh, so, uh, and we discovered there was something really odd about this layer. And that is, it's not just shale, like is behind us, and like is low in this pit. It's this, it's this mismatch of stuff, which has pebbles, 
and uh, tree trunks and ammonites and all sorts of stuff in it um, and we, we, we started to find shark's teeth in it as well so of all the places in this area where we think we could find an Oregon dinosaur this layer is 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 the one because we we think it was uh, we can tell from the orientation of the tree trunk it was a big surge like a tempestite that came it was washed out from the land basically because you know dinosaurs are terrestrial creatures they don't really live in the ocean was the bone that was found the vertebra was it did it belong to the same species we don't know, but okay. possibly, yeah, it'd be plausible ornithopod. Uh, all we can tell about the toe bone is it's ornithopod, and we can't give it a name because we need something like a tooth or a skull to right. do that. Yeah. A toe bone's pretty small. It, yeah, it <laughs> yeah. was pretty ridiculous, but we published it, and it, it's it's the, the, the first Oregon dinosaur. The second Oregon dinosaur right. was published a month later, oh. one that was found in Cape Sebastian. Look this one. So we'll use the, the knives and flip all that up, and then we're going to cover them with uh, a acetone soluble plastic. The particular one I have is, is called but it has a trade name of Butvar. Another one you might hear is Vinac. They're essentially interchangeable. Some people f like the differences of them. I don't see any real difference between them. So we're going to uh, so that's what oh, really? we're going to start with. Just flip, flip them up, clean them up. How do we flip them? Oh, well, what we're going to do now, we're not going to try to flip them up. Eventually, once once we get some Vinac into here and, it's, and it evaporates for an hour or more, uh, then what we'll do is we'll dig around it, because these are not going to come out in one piece as a solid. Uh, they would, if you tried to pull them out, you know, like go underneath it and pull it up like a piece of pie, they would act Trumbo. like some of my wife's pies and just fall apart. So, right here. This is the upper surface. This is, and it goes around, and it's. So what we got to do is go through it? and oh. pop and pop up, lift up the shale that goes with it. That's, that's covering it up. That same way. Yeah, yeah. We're we're taking a shale from the layer that's up above it, and then brush it off. We have a brush here somewhere, and. Then when you want to get the dust off, of course, we use our high-tech beef blower. Okay. And uh, when you flip the stuff off, you can put it in the bucket and somebody can dump it right over there. Because we're so supposed to... All, all of the waste rock goes oh, in the bucket. So that we don't keep looking through it multiple times. That's right. And where this one did not. So let's soak this down really good. I don't know if we're going to be able to salvage that or not. That's uh, going to be difficult to do. But at least we'll give it a try. I uh, love the smell of Vinac in the evening. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to do the line, no problem. <laughs> Just nobody smoke. Go, go a little more. Yeah, so that that one tells the story that that piece of wood, little, little, it, and uh, you know, there's not too much of it left, but it tells the story that that piece of wood broke off a tree, rode it out to the ocean, these little clams colonized it live their lives in these tunnels and the really cool thing is a whole bunch of them live in the tunnels but when they dig their tunnels they don't intersect other people's tunnels they curve around them and they always leave a little film of wood in between the tunnels they're very good at detecting other people's yeah. homes essentially and uh, uh, so there's always there's always a little bit of a divider between them see that final rock is just so soft Okay. I don't know if we'll be able to salvage it or not, but at least we can get some pictures of it and stuff. Yeah. Oh, more logs. Yeah, yeah, we're just going through here real slow to get some of the smaller stuff. Yeah. What do you think about this big one here? Is it one big one or several sm two small ones? I think it's a I think it's a couple of branches that were laying parallel to each other. Mm. 
in here. I don't in know. Here. I, I, that's what I thought. But, was. but again, you look at this, it's and this connect. got the same yeah. structure there. I think it's just one that sort of, I don't know, opened up rotten or something. What, what sort of, what sort of big tree would be rather soft? Fun. What sort of, what sort of big tree at that time would be a little soft and not so durable? Oh, I don't know. Um. I know they have. Well, we yeah, we have evidence of a, 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 um, a pine-like thing, and a, uh... so uh, Dr. Italic was saying a lot of these little uh, orange flakes, where they're kind of triangular shaped or trapezoidal shaped, those are going to be parts of sea urchins. Or, I mean, uh, barnacles. Hmm. barnacles. We do have sea urchin spines mm -hmm. in here. Um, and he found a lump, he was digging, found a lump that is a sea urchin body in mm -hmm. place, not crushed. Hmm. So, a lot of cool little, cool little stuff here. It's not just, not just animals. Mm -hmm. It helps. I found a camel suit there, sure, but sutures, which is a, a study that tells you how to identify yeah. them. Yeah. And so just looking at the sutures is that like, rare. So. Oh. Yeah, I love them. Like when they're like fractals on the computer. Exactly. Really? Yeah, fractals. Well, that's only place you can collect, too. Yeah. You know, you can't collect any vertebrate material out of the John Day.